I'm leaving that in because that's the perfect intro. Very on like brand Drew for Diana to just yeah to right. <laughs> Take the room and leave. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. By the time this airs, the season will have been done and people will see what has happened with the Tejada family and all the things going on. So congratulations, first of all, for a fabulous season. Before we dive thank in, you. three takeaways for this season for you. Um, as a person? Just as myself? a person. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, three takeaways. One would definitely be to like be confident, trust yourself and don't be afraid to like, to just be you and trust your instincts. Okay, I guess that was like four or five, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I talked to uh, Daniel B yesterday and he talked about how you guys being the new kids and embracing the experience and just supporting each other, propping each other up. What was it like just being the, the new kids on the block? He was, he's so proud of you as he should be. Yeah. And just, he just spoke so tenderly about you and the amount of time you guys communicated during the season. I love Daniel. Like that is genuinely my friend. So when this whole thing happened, when we first read the script, I was like, not Zeke. Like I love Daniel. He's so kind, so sweet. So intelligent. Yeah, he's such a good energy for sure. I love that. With, when we look at Diana this season, there was, a, in addition to the, the shake the room moments, just overall, there was just so much growth into who she was, her stepping into who her family is, embracing her role in it. How would you describe the evolution of, of Diana over this season? Oh my, um, definitely she found her voice. She found her voice, the, even from episode five, season one, Monet has been trying to instill in her all these little nuggets of like being confident, knowing your power. Um, of course, not getting caught up in liking Tariq because he is just someone that you need to, you need a partner. And that was in the episode, episode one of season two, like different little nuggets that Monet has been trying to instill in Diana. But I feel like this season, she finally picked those up and she started actually utilizing it and stepping into her voice, which is something that I said all the time. And it finally came to fruition. Like Diana showed that she is and can be a strong woman. She matured and she elevated. So oh, yeah, definitely with, with stepping into that voice though, the knife cuts both ways. And as we came to a close, you know, people are calling her a snitch. Do you think Diana is a snitch? How would you describe no. what she does? Diana is strategic. She's not a snitch. Thank you for asking me that. Diana is not a snitch, okay? She is strategic. She moves for the betterment of family. Um, she's never really snitched like in a bad way, I guess you would call it. Um, it, it was about family. At that table, there was so much deception, so many lies. She wants to get to the truth because family is what matters for her, you know? So I wouldn't say she didn't go like to the police or anybody. It was like, oh, Tariq is selling drugs on campus. She's like, no, ma, you are Zeke's mother. We know like, you know, I mean, maybe the, the timing wasn't the best, but let's not forget that same episode, she tried to come to Monet one-on-one, -on -one. but Monet's like, I don't have time for you, little girl. Like you do what you need to do and I'm leaving. She tried. And it just all came to a head on that day. But I don't think she's a snitch. <laughs> I didn't think so either. You know, I will call it, you know, colorful truth teller because she said some oh, things I, I like that. that needed to be said because uh, mm -hmm. some of those half truths were kind of messing up the family business. So we'll call her a colorful truth teller. I like that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> For sure. With, um, man, the dinner conversation heard around the world. I love a good viral TV moment. And we're fortunate in the press that we get to see the episodes early. So when I watched it, I thought, oh, I cannot wait for this to hit Twitter, for these people to see this dinner conversation. Once the episode aired, who called you first? Because I know you can't disclose oh to your friends and people what's going to happen. 
who called you first and how did you watch from the outside just the explosion of reactions to to fans of the show my parents they <laughs> called me my fiance like my phone was just going and it was so bad because they're over on the west coast so they, they get to watch it at 9 p.m and i had to wait till 12. it took me like an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes to finish that episode because I kept going back watching that scene over and over. And I'm like, first, of course, I'm watching my performance, like, okay, ooh, ooh. And then I'm looking at all of us, we gave it. Like every single person in that scene, we did not play at all. Even when the camera wasn't on us, we still gave that same energy for their coverage because it matters, we're feeding off of each other. But then when it hit, because I couldn't post, I wanted to wait. I didn't want to spoil it for anybody. After it hit those memes, them comparing me to the character Mike on why did I think, why did I get married or how, one of the <laughs> movies? And they're like, who's the worst? Who would you not invite to dinner? I'm like, and everyone's saying Diana. I'm like, dang. And then the slamming the, the birth certificate down with the Uno card. I was like, those are hilarious. Those memes were so funny. I was Maury. I was some buff basketball player. They put my head on. I was like, you guys, Twitter is no joke. Our people, we, we love, listen, we go hard. We know how to manipulate some stuff and post it and get all the laughs. So the thing I've, uh, when I've talked to performers <laughs> who do these big epic type of multicast scenes is just the intensity of it. Because like you said, you all have to have that energy in order for your scene partners for the shot to work. Mm -hmm. Shooting that scene, what is a day like to do that? Because I know you, we need your point of view, we need Monet's point of view, we need things, we need everyone's point of view to make the scene really work. So how intense is it to shoot a scene like that? Wow. So we actually shot that over the course of two days because mm -hmm. they knew that it would, you need so much energy for all of that. So they wanted us to be rested, which I appreciate. Um, and Shanna did a beautiful job. Like, well, I will say this too. <laughs> so Courtney came to set that day and she would come and like, be different little like lines and it would egg other people on to react because we're not expecting that it, that wasn't on the page so it's like oh improv you know um but there was this one moment during my coverage because we started my coverage on the first day and when we went to Mary's well sorry during my coverage when I go off on Monet she didn't lunge at me mm. and then when her coverage came and she got upset, she got up, lunged and threw that napkin. The, the camera didn't catch it, but the napkin was like stuck on my face. I'm trying to like get the napkin off my face. Like I wasn't expecting it. I jumped towards Berta who plays my dad, Lorenzo, like save me. It was so good. So then we shot it again to get the reaction. It was, it was amazing. Like just all those like different nuances and like improvisations of each, character in the scene like they used a lot of our ad libs it was it was it was intense even though it was shot over two days it didn't feel long like it was it was a good day a good two days that was a magnificent I I I too had to go back and watch it a few times I'm like oh my god they are giving it in and this big. whole scene bravo to the cast that was a marvelous thank scene. you so now we in, we, we cruise, well, I wouldn't call it a cruise. We make our way into the final episode and the colorful truth teller has now put the battery in her dad's back and now cousin Z is a wrap. Poor oh, Diana, yeah. how is, how is uh, Latoya re reacting to that? Now your buddy, your buddy is off of the show now because your character <laughs> put some half oh. information in her dad's back. So how do we cruise um, down to the finale? Listen, I will say, cause I'm gonna defend Diana. Um, she didn't necessarily put the battery in his back per se, because Monet told him, I'm the one who's gonna kill Mecca. That's not for you. And he's like, I wanna protect the family. She's like, no, we have this history. I have to do that. Um, 
all I did was just say that these are the passport, the information that, you know, that that's in that bag. Unfortunately, it's not, you don't have one. It's not, you don't have a passport. He's taking care of this family, you know, uh, he made that choice. I can't, I can't trick him or make him make a choice to go after anyone. He always wanted to do that. So I guess maybe it was just like the little icing on the cake that he needed, but Diana, Diana is the cause. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate your time, young lady. Bravo to you. Wonderful performances this so season. Much. Wonderful character growth. I'm glad you made it to the other side. I can't wait to see the adventure continue. Thank you for your time, young lady. I appreciate you. And Thank you have you so much again. A wonderful finale. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.